to the, to the, the today's webinar. I hope we will be, um, yeah, showing, explaining, learning something new. And especially what is even more important for me is actually that you will be asking questions as many as possible because that's the only way that I know and that you know that we have done something actually good and smart. And I hope it will be useful for you. And as I said, whenever you have a question, please ask because that's the most important part for us that um, yeah, whatever we talk, it really is understood. Uh, but anyway, I usually do not complicate too much with my presentations. So usually you are understanding most of the stuff. As I said, if not, please talk and ask uh, because that, as I mentioned, is the most important part. What we would like to do today is kind of touch a little bit to explain different rankings of, um, of scientific journals. See, I'm, that's, that's a catastrophe. <laughs> I don't have the pen. I don't have the pen. Now, Did I you want it, to... I now I have it, I hope I have it now. Okay, is it here? Yeah, it's here, okay. So, sorry, uh, rankings of scientific journals. I try to explain why that is actually good to know how they are ranked, at what place they are kind of ranked, because that is kind of mirroring in a way the quality of those journals. And definitely that is for us, you actually extremely important because based on that, you know that actually you are actually in safe hands and through that you are perfectly fine that whatever you are kind of reading and whatever you are including into your proposal, into your thesis writing, or after that actually into your um, publications that it should be, could be, and probably has to be included. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is what I would like to talk a little bit about is actually for the ones who are preparing the proposal or for the ones who are kind of writing up the thesis, a little bit which parts can be actually taken based on different types of articles as well based on the structure of the article because uh, that might help you actually quite a lot to understand from which parts can you actually extract your literature or your ideas or your hypothesis or your support for the methodology as well as which journal article types are useful for this actually exercise. And once again, as I said, you are not bothering me. You can always come with a question or you can definitely always come with the chat and I'll try to explain or uh, answer actually all the possible questions. So some questions we will be discussing about today is kind of the first one would be, does it matter which journal do I take? As long as it's about my topic. Because many, many times you are doing actually what we have discussed last week, a keyword search, and you will actually see that there are many journals which have touched actually your topic. So the question is, should I go and take any of those journals or should I do a little bit more actually analysis about the quality, let's say, of the journals? I don't know how you do that, but I have since ever kind of asked my students that they have to find the highly ranked journals because for me, as I will be saying, this is kind of assurance that they can include those journals into their proposals, into their discussion, into their uh, whatever it is, whenever they're writing the thesis. Then another question is, I don't know if you have ever ask that question or where have you started with when you were preparing actually your proposal or your PhD or DBA? 
where have you first collected the data? What type of journal articles have you taken? Have you ever discussed about that? Have you included that into your search strategy? So that's what I would like to touch today as well. And finally, as I said, um, kind of how you can extract in a most efficient way, actually from different parts of the articles you are reading and kind of link that to the parts of the thesis to different chapters of the thesis you are writing or preparing. So these are the areas I would like to touch actually today in this webinar. I don't know, do I have, can I get any answers to those three questions? Are they clear? Have you done that? Are you following those questions and following actually a proper strategy? So tell me, May, what are you doing? Regarding the first question, maybe. Or write it up. So that's for me important. I don't know. I don't know how many are today. So I would like to get actually some answers to that before I even move forward. Are we aware of that? Are we aware of that? Anyway, we'll talk a bit later maybe about that. So first of all, I would say why journal articles? I do prefer, prefer actually that the students are including and reading mostly the journal articles. That is my view. There are different views on that. We can discuss it. Um, and I guess at one point we might even bring a webinar which will be talking um, exactly the opposite. Why maybe not the journal articles, but maybe some other sources of literature which can be actually used for your literature review and to get actually a lot of information and understanding and knowledge about all the areas you need for your TBA or PhD. Um, as we said, there are actually different reviews, different literature sources or literature review sources. As I said, today we'll be talking mostly about the journal articles, but definitely you should use some trade journals, magazines, reports. I mean, it depends what is your topic, but they are extremely useful. Definitely you should use books, as I said last week, I guess, probably mostly for the methodology section, maybe not for the others, unless there's really some actually, um, really, really actually important books, seminal works and stuff like that. You can always go for conference proceedings in order to see what's going on rather recently because the proceedings are publishing things which are rather new. Um, as you know, before you publish a journal article, it takes quite a long time. Uh, and sometimes the things might be a little bit, I wouldn't say out, not definite yet, but still uh, with proceedings or some governmental reports, you might be actually even earlier on the ball. So try to do that as well. Definitely all of them. But as I said, I do prefer the journal articles. And um, yeah, let us talk about them. Thesis, dissertations, definitely as well. That's a good, good actually uh, lecture for you to read. But as I said, what should we pick? For me, it's clear, as I said, we have to read another, I don't know, 200, 300, 400 different journal articles in order to understand what's going on and be ready actually to finish our DBA or PhD. That is it, as well as other stuff, okay? Don't please understand me that I'm kind of uh, just fan of journal articles, but uh, the majority should actually come kind of coming from there. But still, another question I would like to ask you today, do we have any good arguments? Why are we trying to use any of those, any of those sources? Which one do you a, prefer? I've got a comment from Candry. Uh, yep. There's a different requirement for PhD thesis in, in for her example, university. For my university uh, should based on yep. two minimum. Minimum three articles published in peer review, one, 1.1 or 1.2 journals. Um, there must be one or two uh, star journals. Uh, this uh, is the frame which well, journals you can use. Uh, are we, uh, what do you mean? That means that you pass actually the final exam after 
you have published. Is that how I read that, Kadri? That means that you have to publish. Yes, yes. So you can't uh, you can't uh, defend your thesis before you haven't published at least three articles. So it <laughs> it's already. Happy. It already sets you these certain requirements, uh, which uh, sources you can use in your uh, published work. But uh, maybe my question would be, uh, and I'm actually a researcher, which means that I work a lot with this like non-official academic papers, like uh, uh, papers from real life. And uh, it's, it's always my struggle uh, that how to... Um, uh, not split, but uh, how do you divide uh, the sources between like literature review part and source of my research data? So maybe there is like my little concern. How can I implement these uh, uh, reports and uh, non-academic papers in my work? I, I'm researching social innovation and public sector innovation, which means that uh, not all that uh, uh, readings are not like this academic literature, but st still like influencing uh, uh, definitely. My, my research. <laughs> definitely, I agree with that. I mean, uh, okay, should I go actually and try to answer that question? I mean, in a way, first of all, as I mentioned, we have different other reports actually, which are out there. And especially for you in innovation, probably the things are running quite fast. So you would like to have actually the newest possible papers and the newest possible, let's say, information. Uh, for me, the first thing is actually I check who is actually doing the research. That means what organization is doing the research, because that is for me an important source of credibility. That's the first thing. And the second thing is usually the methodology is there as well. So how they have actually collected their data, how they have actually kind of analyzed the data. And in case that is actually sound and good, then you have probably quite a good source and you can use it. But if those two things are not there and are not given, then uh, I do not really like them too much. That's how I see, it. that's my view. I don't know how you see it, uh, but that's, that's uh, you know, many times you have actually results out there, but the methodology was definitely not adequate and they even don't want to show it how they do it. That's why I'm saying if you have actually a bigger research institutions or even other governmental institutions or United Nations institutions, or I don't know, World Bank or something like that, they do have actually clear and good research departments. And those researches are done actually in a, in, usually in a very good way because they are influencing the policy making for sometimes even the whole world. So they cannot be uh, kind of, of low quality and they are taking really care of that. Um, but that's I kind of, you know, that means who is doing the research, kind of the researchers and their credibility, credibility of the institution, and as well the credibility or let's say the checking of the methodology. That would be actually for me the important thing. But on the other side, you do have actually some internet pages, kind of forums and stuff like that, where you see who is publishing there or who is talking there and uh, how, let's say, serious this as a source is or might be. And sometimes those areas or those forums might be actually a good data source as well. So that's how I see it. I don't know if you're happy with my answer, but... Um, that's how I see that area yeah, of, I, I of would, the question. I would say that it's also pr probably a matter of this balance. It, it is uh, that I, uh, information or a tip what I get, get my supervisors that uh, uh, you can use also this like uh, non-academic papers, but uh, you can't use them too much. So you have to... Uh, um, uh, assess uh, whether including uh, this information is like uh, so beneficial and uh, like um, see the, the, the question is for the yeah. question the question is for what you are using this information if you're using it actually to develop your ideas and then research do research uh, let's say on that that's perfectly fine but if you use them as a proof that something is 
as they have reported, then it's actually for me a little bit a risky thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, two different is... things. I mean, to develop ideas, you can read. That's why I had here the magazines, reports, whatever it is, conference proceedings, everything can actually trigger a good idea to make actually then a research. But still, in case you want to do it in a proper way, is it now a PhD or is it anything else? Uh, you have to show actually the linkage in most of the cases to the other, let's say, literature sources. And usually that mm -hmm. is journal articles, journal papers, which have been published actually in good journals. So at one point you will not be kind of, you know, able to escape to go and dig deep into the research publications and uh, journal articles of high quality. But uh, to understand what is market doing, to understand how the things are there, what is actually innovative and stuff like that in the organizations, definitely. If you want to have that as an input to do actually your research afterwards. I agree with that. Okay. okay. We also have uh, two comments on the wide journal articles. Jane says, um, prefers the journal articles because of the empirical review aspect, unlike books. And Islam says, I prefer peer review journal articles with high IF. Um, eventually, you might need to use other resources in which it will help you with your, your thesis. Um, I agree with both those comments, definitely. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Islam, for that. Um, yeah. And I, that's what I, I try to talk today about it, okay? I mean, if you know it all, then we can discuss about something else. I'm perfectly fine with that as well. Um, but let us go maybe for some of you who have already haven't started yet or are actually on the way there uh, that I try to explain why I am kind of um, yeah, pushing my students to read many, many, many articles. As I said, 200, 300 is actually probably the lowest number what they have actually to read. So why? Because they are peer reviewed. That's for me, one of the most important parts. I mean, I don't want to go now through the whole uh, discussion, what happens when you try to publish paper. Some of you have done it and some of you have been extremely happy. Some of you have been extremely unhappy. Some of them were actually probably in the beginning extremely unhappy when publi finally published it, you were extremely happy because that peer review is actually really a thing which is, I'm talking here about assurance of quality and reliability that is definitely there. Because uh, the guys who are reading your paper are actually in most of the cases and the better, the higher the impact factor, that is actually what you have mentioned in chat, the more, um, let's say, advanced the re review process is and the most um, challenging the reviewers are. That means that's actually for me the first kind of factor or argument which says, journal papers of high impact factor are really actually scrutinized um, sometimes even too much. I mean, if I just go and, 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 and talk about my first paper, I have, I have not published finally, okay? Because it was rejected, just the first pa pa paper of my, I mean, after I have finished my PhD and it was not published. I'll tell you why, because there was a reviewer who was not happy with my reply to his comments. And the idea was actually that the reply was not so bad, but I kind of said that I would like to have a little bit of wider introduction because some of the audience who will be reading that paper might not have actually all the knowledge about the area, um, but the issue was, that um, the guy was Nobel laureate and he was actually not expecting and he was actually never happy whenever he got something what was kind of negative uh, based on his comments, okay? So that is what I got the information on two years later when I was talking to the journal editor and he said, it was a good paper, I'm so sorry. But that guy, and we know who that is, I met him actually a few times, has just rejected it because he said, out, no way. Uh, that was something personal rather than actually on the, let's say based on different, on different arguments. But once again, peer review actually is really a process. 
And some papers, I mean, I can recall, uh, we have been actually fighting for more than one year to kind of answer two or three rounds of comments and of uh, feedback from different reviewers. So that's for me the most important part. Um, definitely there has to be sound methodology because if there's not given, um, then the reviewers will never actually kind of let you go. Uh, additionally, as you know, the things are getting more deep than in many other, uh, let's say, uh, sources of literature, definitely much deeper than, than in any reports, much deeper in, even in books, uh, where the books are kind of many, many times showing the personal view of the authors. So this is much more kind of independent. Uh, attempt to explain and discuss phenomena and results. That is always a discussion there. It has to be a discussion there. Every single actually good journal has discussion. Not so good ones um, don't have even discussion. So we have to understand, explain and discuss the phenomena, not just document them. Uh, they always reflect the latest research, maybe not the very latest, but definitely um, quite late research. And uh, they are always kind of showing the contribution to the body of knowledge. So it has to be something new in order that you are able to publish there. And based on that, we are definitely getting actually a lot of benefits. Uh, in the limitations, they highlight what we don't know yet in a way and what hasn't been done in a proper way or in the research gaps as well. And on the other side, in the section of the future research, they are highlighting what we could do next. And that is actually another positive thing uh, of those journal articles. So for me, once again, the most important factor is peer reviewed because um, as I said, we, we have done that many, many times. And in most of the cases, it was a suffering actually voyage before we have published in any of those good uh, journals. And that is for me, uh, one of the criteria which tells me that we have to do it in a good way. And that means that everybody who is reading that afterwards has kind of uh, assurance that the papers have been written in a good way. I don't want now to go actually in another, um, let's say maybe negative area of publishing uh, because um, that's not the, let's say focus of my today's webinar. So I don't know how, good you are familiar with different journal rankings have you checked that i don't know what you are following as i said i have here actually one islam and uh jane said impact factor is there something else are you following any other of the rankings do we know any other one uh abdc yeah okay i'll talk about that as well uh, not my favorite one, but yeah, it's there. So, but first of all, before I touch and present for me the most important four, I would uh, like to say something else. You know, for each of the journals, and that goes actually back once again, back to the quality of the papers which are published then in the journal, is that each of the journals has to fulfill criteria to be included in one of those rankings. And that's not the easy cheesy stuff. I mean, I recall when we were trying to actually establish one journal, which had actually a history of almost 20 years. And then we said, okay, we want to get actually go one step farther. It was a painful, painful actually work. Uh, before we actually finally came into the Scopus, it was three to four years of extremely a lot of work and actually really fight to get good journals, uh, good papers, to get actually good authors to get actually cited afterwards because that's extremely important and things like that. So each journal has to fulfill criteria, as I said. That does not mean that you just want to be part of a ranking and you will get there. Definitely not, forget it. So that's another, for me, criteria, which, um, as I said, fulfills my request of quality for different papers. Yeah, for sorry, for different journals and through that actually for all the papers which have been published in there. Maybe not all of them, but let's say 95% of them 
are then following actually everything what this has been actually um, yeah, required. The first one, and for me, the most important one is journal citation reports. And that is what we usually know and we actually mention kind of as an impact factor. And that is actually even the, um, let's say, yeah, that's not because there were actually different uh, owners, let's say, of this one. But anyway, here we are talking about the impact factor. For me, as I said, the most important ones. Um, the second one, but I will not go now and discuss everything. It's written uh, how they do it. It's usually uh, counting in a way the number of citations in this case during the last two years. And then in the next case, when we are talking about Scopus, we are talking usually about the last four years and things like that. I mean, I will not go now into detail how that is actually um, calculated, but you will see I have a slide which tells about that as well. The next one for me is the Scopus. Yeah, usually, I mean, usually we do have some more journals in the Scopus database than in the Web of Science database. So um, that means, but still, that would be for me the second choice. I'm talking about me personally, okay? And then as um, Islam has mentioned, A, B, B, C, but that is kind of rather the business schools in Australia, uh, but in a little bit, I mean, the selection criteria is maybe not so clear. And some of those, um, let's say levels are done a little bit on the, in, how should I say, um, not, not really everything is justified through the numbers, what's maybe not uh, the nicest way of doing it. And then we have the English system. It's ABC, Academic Journal Quality Guide. That's the third one, the fourth one, which I would kind of consider as the yeah, important one. Probably, I, as I said, I would go with me personally, impact factor, Scopus, ABS, and then maybe theoretically with ABDC as well. Um, but yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, I've got two questions here. Okay, sure. Uh, one is, is it bad to cite an article from a predatory journal? Um, see, that's a, that's a, that's a, I mean, uh, I, is it, is it, I mean, the, the question is how you, how you define now that actually, is it just because you have to pay for it or is there something else in the stream? How you would kind of characterize a predatory journal? Is it just payment or something else? Because we do have actually some journals where you have to pay that you get published, but still they are actually not, not I mean, they are good. That's, that's how I see it. But I mean, still, if they have a high impact factor, if they're actually highly, highly cited, that means having high factor in all those different good rankings. I'm talking now about good rankings, okay? I'll come to that later as well. Then uh, that could go as well. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I have, I, I, we have paid actually twice or three times. Uh, for example, I, I, for, a, for a sustainability journal, it actually has quite a nice impact factor. Um, but yeah, it is get, it, it, at one point that will actually, anyway, probably make them not so interesting anymore. Uh, not just because of the payment, but the quality is getting usually after you have to pay a lot lower and lower because many times the policy is to publish as many as possible. Um, but if, as I said, if that has a nice impact factor or something like that, I mean, you know, any other factor, uh, it's not so bad. Importance of impact factors depends what is your strategy in publishing. Do you need, want to publish consistent? Um, yeah, Kadri, I mean, you know, now, but now you're talking about yourself publishing. I'm rather talking about what can the PhD students actually include, read, and um, kind of examine, understand for their PhD research. I do agree with you, but still, you know, it depends mostly on the university, uh, university strategy as well and requirements. So um, you have actually universities where really they do care and they request from you 
impact factors in order to be promoted. And you have actually then organizations which are not so, so let's say strict on that. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely if you get a A star or extremely high impact factor every five years, once again, it depends on the first of all strategy of the organization where you are in. And on the other side, how you actually see that. Is it a rather quality or is it really quantity? But uh, as you said, every five years, I mean, a good paper from the beginning of the research down to get published is definitely from three to five years anyway. So it depends how many you have in your pipeline um, that you can publish. I find an extremely interesting information in the article. Yeah, it, as I said, depends why you're using it. You can always use it, uh, but don't please um, kind of justify your framework or justify your, uh, I don't know, hypothesis just on that. You can add that additionally, but you have to support it with some additional good papers. Uh, do that. Okay, yeah, Kadri. I mean, as I said, depends on you, how you will, how, how as I said, what you want as a researcher how you want to establish yourself and what is actually the organization requesting from you regarding that. Okay. Um, so, and then oh, we have uh, another one which can be useful for you whenever you want to actually kind of select and check uh, based on different disciplines, maybe based on different countries. So you can use actually this country ranking or a uh, Simago journal ranking. I'll show that actually a little bit later as well, but they are not using any their own methodology. Everything is actually taken from the Scopus database, but it's sometimes uh, useful as well because you can easily compare or analyze different uh, journals, or even you can go actually and see how a country is, is doing or not doing in a way. But as I mentioned, there are many, many other databases out there. What I have mentioned, I have mentioned kind of the four which have, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say the DOI is definitely another one, but I just mentioned the four which are a kind um, of really known in the social sciences. I don't want to go now into different areas like uh, physics, medicine, and stuff like that. They, I mean, still Scopus and, and, and uh, Impact Factor, that means Web of Science are there as well but maybe not the other ones I have mentioned. I was just talking rather about the social sciences. Um, as I said, you will read actually and uh, see so many flashing impact factors and so on, but uh, don't believe everything, do a good research on that. What does this mean? Uh, what is the database and uh, what is really its value whenever you are using that? Because it makes no sense that you are reading actually from papers or um, 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 journals which are actually of low quality right now because you have to build actually your knowledge on good stuff and you are learning from that what you are reading and that helps you a lot. Okay, so how can you see those? I mean, I don't know if you do know that or not, then I can skip it. How we actually see how ranked on which databases are some of the journals in the city. Uh, and 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 how how um, um, high let's say their scores are. I just took a journal of cleaner production, one of the journals I have published as well. Here you will see under abstracting and indexing, each of the journals has that actually in which databases are they included, and they are even even more. They are at the first page, just including uh, presenting actually the more let's say renowned and recognized databases. But here we have, here is written site score that is actually for the Scopus. And here we have actually impact factor 9.2. So if I go one slide farther, I'll touch now first the impact factor. As you see, 9.2 is rather a high impact factor. Uh, if, whenever you see something like that, uh, you will definitely know that you are reading a really good journal especially in the social sciences are not many actually of that. I mean, even this one is not really a social science, but it's rather about, I um, mean, we have published something about uh, sustainability linked to organization performance and things like that. 
Um, so that would be impact factor. And it's usually, I mean, for all the, all the journals, they have actually a high impact factor. They always show it on the first page like this one. And as you might see here on the second part of it is how he was 2016, impact factor five and something, 18, a little bit higher, 19 even higher in 2020. 20. That means they are kind of continuously actually looks like uh, doing quite well. That means uh, the impact factor is growing. And another thing, which I would like to kind of stress, what tells us actually the ranking and what tells us actually the level or the number, let's say, here you can check that as well. If we are not talking about the journal of clean production, you see they are actually presenting actually different areas. And here is written in, in environmental engineering, they are out of 54 papers, number six, based on impact factor. In environmental sciences, they are out of 274 different journals, ranked 18. And here we have green sustainable sciences and technology. They are ranked actually number three out of 44 papers, uh, journals. So, I mean, that is quite a good journal and uh, whatever you read there is not uh, bad stuff. So you can easily use it for whatever you actually want to have. And then the next one is side score that is actually coming from the Scopus database. It goes, as I said, it's calculated a little bit in a different way over four years. And here are even uh, articles, reviews, conferences, and other, let's say, data sources. But once again, uh, quite a nice number, quite high site score factor. So what I want to say is you will get, after you will be kind of uh, checking and reading all those journals, you will understand what is kind of a high impact factor or high site score um, number or not. So based on that, you will be able kind of to see whether those journals are highly ranked or not highly ranked. But once again, I don't want to say that that's actually the only criteria you should go for, okay? That's that's what I want to say. I've Any got questions? one question here. Sure. Uh, there, there is one. Um, I've seen researchers citing their own work several times. Is that okay? Uh, see, that, 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 that. <laughs> Uh, um, um, should we start now talking about uh, being being actually ethical and stuff like that? I mean, in some cases, you do have to kind of cite yourself as well. I mean, we do that uh, uh, because, for example, if you have the same project and you have published, let's say, um, methodology, in a previous journal, then usually you will not actually explain the, the, the methodology once again in detail, but you will say kind of in that journal, I have published the methodology. If you want to know it, just read it and check it there. Okay. But right now I got an in, in I got what you mentioned right now. I, I recall it was exactly the journal of cleaner production. We just sent a paper to them. I was the next morning actually at the conference in, in, in Rome and I met the editor and he said, you know, I'm not happy with you. I just rejected your paper. I said, why? Well, why is that so? And he said, not reject it, but resubmit it because you have taken your methodology almost in the same way as you have published it in another journal. I said, I mean, come on. You know, it is the same thing. Why should I actually rephrase or rewrite or whatever? Makes no sense. And he said, I cannot do it. You have to re rewrite it and then we'll publish your journal. So think like that, you know? Um, yeah, but regarding the cit citing yourself many, many times, in most, of the, in most of the good databases, they check that. And I can show you, I mean, we don't have time, but if I go with mine, I will actually clearly show you how many citations are, which are actually together. It's written kind of um, number of citations and number of self citations. Okay, so that is once again counted. And based on that, you will fast actually see that you have kind of maybe 
done something what shouldn't be done. And uh, the editors and even the reviewers see that. If I see a paper, when I see that there are actually five or six or seven actually um, authors, let's say with the same name, I will definitely say that's no, no go or something like that. That is not working. And the reviewers know the names of the authors and they actually kind of act on that. Uh, and that's definitely not a good image if you do something like that. Okay, so here's another journal. Uh, oh, we published actually some time ago here as well. Uh, but I wanted just to bring this one because the impact factor, best quartile, five years, side score, SNP, SJR, and things like that are here explained quite nicely. And I put it actually into the yeah, presentation that you have actually a clear indication how that is um, calculated. And something else, you know, what's important as well, I mentioned that some of the papers, here is written speed acceptance rate. Um, for some of the papers, you will be waiting more than one year, sometimes even two years actually to get published. Um, some of them are really fast. And in this case, they even kind of, you know, say within seven days, you will get actually the first decision. That means desk rejected, desk rejected or um, taken into the consideration for the um, review process. 65 days, that's actually two months. First post review decision, extremely fast. 13 days from acceptance to online acceptations, fast. And on the other side, not bad, 13% acceptance rate. That means each eight paper will be kind of published, the rest will be rejected. So that's another kind of indicator that that's not too bad journal. Okay, everything clear so far? I hope I'm not going too fast and not complicating too much. What I'm trying right, really now just to say is actually that you understand uh, what are you reading, let's say, and where should you read. And now I just have actually two um, slides where you can see the, 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 the best papers from a journal citation report where you see that the highest impact factor is 292. That means this journal was cited 292 for each paper actually during the last two years. Here we have ABDC, ABDC ranking, that's the Australian one, where they rank it actually on A star is the highest, then it comes A, B, and C. These are actually kind of four different levels of, the, of their kind of quality. Um, and then we set ABS ranking, that's what I mentioned before, the English system, they have actually kind of four different levels. It goes with A, it's the same usually then, the A star, A, uh, B and C kind of, but what I wanted to say once again is, see, for example, for um, one area of management, you have here actually just one, which is actually grade four. And then you have, I don't know what is it here, four or five, which are grade two. Um, then you have actually even more three and even more four. So you see that the higher you go actually within the ranking, the less the papers will be there. And theoretically, theoretically, once again, that is kind of sign that you are reading a good, a good uh, journal. Here was what I mentioned before, SGAR. Uh, here, you, what I mentioned is actually, you can go actually and pick, for example, business management and accounting. Uh, you can go actually looking for different countries. You can select different journals. You can select different years and things like that. So quite a nice tool in order to show you how um, yeah, those, let's say, journals are kind of ranked within this Scopus used um, database. And then the last slide regarding the citation index, uh, what I wanted to say here is that all of you, you can do it, okay? Based on your research, based on your PhD, you will be able to do it. Just do actually a good research and then definitely an unpleasant journey, especially for the first paper. But uh, I just brought some of my publications uh, with my PhD students. This one was actually even, I guess we have four papers there. This one was done with another PhD student. 
This one, many actually were done with the PhD students, PhD student, PhD student, PhD student. So you can do it, okay? So even quite nice impact factors uh, are not bad to be uh, not heavy or hard actually to be to be to be um, yeah aim to and finally you can do it so definitely the sooner you start about thinking of publishing if you want to do that definitely it goes and you can do it so as I said all those who are crossed out were actually done based on the PhDs and PhD research so a good research pays off think of it so that's the last Slide regarding the rankings. Any questions to that? If not, I'm gonna continue. Am I am I too am I too slow? Too boring? Certainly not boring. I'm getting a no, you're not too slow, and no, you're not boring. There you go. Okay, okay. Yeah, just two. What about the rest? I mean, come on. Definitely not boring. So, a catastrophe. What are I do today? have a question come through. What do you do when your proposal is rejected? Let us talk about that on the end, okay? Because that's okay. a totally another question, which is really out of the out of the scope of today. But I, yeah. I'm happy to happy to answer it, okay? Mm -hmm. After that, just uh, hold it to the end. Yep. Yeah, please. Okay. So, getting familiar with journal article type. Why I'm bringing that is actually because there are different types of articles. And uh, if you do not know, no, do, no, do not know that, uh, it, um, yeah, it's not too nice because maybe you are reading something what you maybe shouldn't or you are searching for something else and you are re you're searching actually in a wrong, should I say, article type. So, Generally, you have those five different, generally I say, I mean, you have different publishers and different views and they might find something else, but that is actually kind of the journal, uh, the general view on that. The review papers, original research, original article, research article, research articles, uh, different names with different publishers, short reports or just letters or short communications, case studies, and actually, journals which are specialized on uh, new methodologies, improved methodologies or methods. And uh, what I usually bring and I have it as, as a, my own additional, let's say type would be conceptual and theoretical papers. And I'll talk about all of them a little bit, but not as I said, too much. So whenever you start actually doing your research and whenever you start, should I say preparing your PhD proposal or DBA proposal or whatever it is proposal, whenever you are trying to get actually familiar with an area, go and search for few review papers. Please do that because they are really explaining the current state of the play of the knowledge and that will give you actually the best, the best overview of what's going on right now. As I say, I'll not go into area of the details, but Review articles provide a comprehensive summary of research on a certain topic. And if you actually combine that, that they include usually at least 100 papers, that is a really nice overview paper, a nice review about your topic. So you will find actually really a lot of information in there. And they are actually state of the state of the field, state of the art, okay? It's important to start with those ones to give you the wide, actually, overview. Uh, they're often written, really, by the leaders. And then you can even actually search, you know, keywords with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, authors. And you will see those guys have published quite a lot because they, that's why they were invited to write. Um, and it is a... It's, I wrote here, reviews are often widely read. Uh, if you look actually at the citations of those papers, you will really see that actually many, many have cited them finally, especially in the introduction or um, chapter and uh, often actually in their literature review chapter. So start with those ones. I really kind of recommend you whenever you are new, especially for the new um, 
researchers or for the new DBA students, PhD students preparing your proposals, that's the way how we go. Then I will not go into that uh, right now, just for you that we have kind of even more, but these are the three most common uh, ways how the review papers are written, kind of a literature review generally about the current knowledge. Then we have systematic reviews and meta-analysis. As I said, I'm not going to that because I'm too boring anyway. Um, read that and check that. Um, so let us touch the other one, original research. That is actually the normal, let's say a most common type, original article, research article, research article, as I said, depends uh, what you will read. That is actually a normally um, scientific journal paper, which uh, fully reports actually on the data of the research. Everything is there as we know, as you have read them, actually introduction is there written in a proper way. The literature review is always there, methodologies written, it's nicely presented results and definitely a discussion question, a discussion section. Uh, is it now quantitative, qualitative? It doesn't matter, but definitely these are the papers. I would say whenever you are actually in your area after you have read uh, one or two or review papers, then you are stuck usually to the original papers. Uh, what did we say? 200, 300, 400 or something like that would be a new guy, a nice number to be included actually into your PhD, maybe a little bit less in the DBA. Then we have short reports and that is actually what, um, who, I forgot the name, sorry. Um, who said that, was it Kadri or I don't know, who was that? Uh, somebody, somebody said actually about, about uh, where to search for the newest stuff and for the, when we were talking about uh, innovation, so that could be not a bad idea that you go actually and search in the papers where we are talking about the uh, short reports, short communication, brief communication, because that is actually really a limited presentation of their research. Usually not all the results are there, but whenever the stuff is quickly changing, they don't want to wait unless uh, and, until they publish one year or even longer. So they go with actually this type of journal articles where you are really presenting the newest and the novel actually uh, ideas and results in one of the in one of the areas not a good thing as well to be actually uh, really what is new running out there but are not full of them and then we have actually kind of case studies if you really are deep and deeper into one area then you might actually go and read some case studies as well which will give you then different perspectives, let's say for different organizations or different, um, I don't know, styles or types or whatever it is. Or if you are actually in um, medical area, then that will be uh, many times useful as well. But as I said, um, that is to make your knowledge even deeper into one, um, into one uh, really area. And then of interest as well, Usually I say, have I mentioned that even before? I usually say that um, books are nice actually to be read around the met your methodology. So that helps because the papers are maybe not really explaining it. They give you a clear indication and they give you actually good way how to do your methodology because you see it actually uh, in, in, in an implementation of a methodology in a journal paper because it has to be there and explained but when you want to understand actually deeper, then books are actually really useful or you go actually and really search for the papers where uh, new methodologies, which were recently developed uh, will be presented. And based on that, you can actually go and try to find really something, maybe what you would need. And then, as I said, here we are kind of finishing with the official one and then uh, I would like to talk shortly about this one uh, because I want why, why I'm talking about it. So I put it here. So be smart and start thinking of this first publication of your thinking. Many times um, we have published with my PhD students and I'm not just talking about myself, but even about other guys that actually 
even your conceptual framework can be published. You have actually journals where that is actually taken. We have even published in the Journal of Cleaner Production, actually a conceptual framework because this was really something new and totally unique. So that means even when you start thinking of your study and you haven't even started to, to collect the data, you are almost ready to publish a good journal paper if you do that. But for that, you know, if that's actually a new concept of framework, you will definitely need to read, need to read a lot of good journals and cite them in order to justify your novelty and your uniqueness. But don't forget, everything's there. If you want to do it, you are free to do it. Okay. Anything regarding the different types of journal articles? No questions. No questions. I'm sorry, we do have one. Ms. Rin, which, which one, one is, is the preferred for publication, original article or conference proceedings? What do you mean for publication, for your publication, what you would like to do, Ms. Serene, or? Yes. They are two different, totally different things, actually. You know, conference paper presenting at the conference is actually, in most of the cases, not so challenging as doing that actually or publishing in a really good journal. Though there are conferences where the rejection rate, let's say, or acceptance rate is low as well. So you have to actually bring that stuff at a high level as well. But still, uh, going to a good conference can be challenging, but publishing original paper is even much more challenging because in, the, in, a, in, a, in a conference, you are usually focusing on your research and trying to show what is kind of new. And you don't have to kind of establish the whole, um, let's say, framework around it and justify every, your research question, justify your, um, your, your, your um, let's say, hypothesis and things like that, present a really clear and justified research gaps and stuff like that. So it is much, much, much easier. And it is counted, I mean, we can go back to uh, somebody, I mean, to, I don't know who was that, um, who was talking about uh, publishing. So um, it is counted at the university level or at the, in the academic level, much, much, much lower. I have one more question is, Jane. can you clarify the difference between a review and a conceptual, uh, conceptual article? And conceptual, um, yeah. Sure. Uh, once again, when we are talking about the review paper, we are talking about review across an area, usually, research area. And uh, in there, you are taking usually the 100, let's say, most important papers which have published around that topic or around that area. And based on that, you are kind of, first of all, giving a good background then you are actually talking about the state of the art of the research area. And then usually you have, not usually, you have to kind of even uh, start talking or presenting what might be actually done in the future. So what are actually the, the new avenues in this research? Okay, when you go back to the conceptual or theoretical uh, to conceptual paper, that means that you even do not have any data yet, okay? You are just yeah. trying to present your conceptual framework. Let's say, I mean, I, I don't have them today, but you guys usually use them actually, you know? If you have your conceptual framework, I don't know, have no idea how that could be, okay? Uh, let's say these are your different constructs or variables, and then you have something here, and then you put that actually into a new, relationships or something like that. And that is actually then really clearly justified with literature. And usually you will then maybe uh, add additional, additional hypotheses or prepositions and justify them as well. And based on that, you will kind of conceptualize actually one topic in a new way, totally new way, or uh, from a different perspective. 
And that uh, would be then kind of the conceptual article. So without any data, just based on the previous literature review. Um, is it okay, Jane? Have I answered? Yes, yes, thank okay. you. Thanks, yeah. sure. Okay, if there are no questions, then let us go to the um, your last part, last part, almost last part. Uh, and here I'm kind of touching the third question from the beginning where I would like to yeah, make the linkages between the article structure and your thesis. So in a way, what could be taken from different parts of the journal article. Um, that's a typical structure, as we all know, and that is actually really close to that what you will have to write in your for your thesis as well. Doesn't matter, DBA, PhD, abstract is there, introduction is there, literature is there, methodology is there, analysis results is there, discussion has to be there, conclusions, implications are there, limitations, future research, okay, references as well. So this part is definitely in every thesis, and it is definitely included in every of the good journal papers as well. So don't forget that. So how you read that? How can you analyze that? How can you actually kind of critically read the papers and how you can actually link then the abstract to your actual thesis? Where will you put that information? Where will you put I don't know, information from literature? Where will you put limitations and stuff like that? So is there any linkage between your thesis and the journal papers? That's just the last part. I mean, you know it anyway, but mainly just to refresh your, um, yeah, views. Because the question I am asking you right now, is there any section which is more important than the other one? Would you kind of prefer to read in a paper just, I don't know, introduction and maybe just literature review or maybe just discussion? Or I don't know, maybe just future research. Is there something like that or not? You can't read the discussion and conclusion. Okay, but why would you do that? Is the question. Uh, Jane, it's, she says it depends. I agree with this answer. I agree with Kadri as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But it depends why would I read discussion and conclusion? For what purpose? Yeah, it's um, uh, if I if I need to uh, 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 use it in uh, cr creating the background of my own research or understanding the existing uh, uh, art of state or or whatever. So there is the like most important findings from this previous research. What I want to include. Okay, I do agree with you. That is for special pur that is for special purpose. I agree with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I but but also what I'm doing that um, if I find some interesting uh, article, I very often uh, uh, also uh, read these references because through them uh, them I can uh, reach to another uh, valuable resources. That, so with that that about that we were talking last week. That that is actually yeah. kind of a research strategy, how to understand and how to go deep and deeper into one area, and especially yeah. to follow one author or to follow a group of authors. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I agree. I mean, there are different reasons why you could or you should read maybe just uh, or maybe just future research. You know, guys, when you are searching for uh, good ideas or when you are searching for uh, your topic, let's say, or when you're searching for a proposal, Future research as well actually is a, is, a, is a really a good, good actually source of ideas because as I said, in a good journal, based on the whole introduction, literature review, methodology, your own results, the discussion that has been actually written, then you still have to suggest what could be actually researched in the future, what hasn't been done yet. And that means somebody who has a good knowledge and good overview across actually different areas 
will write that could be done in the future. So if you read, for example, uh, your topic, you might probably reach as the future research, for example, okay? Uh, I have two comments. Um, actually, I have to one decide, is... I'm reading from Islam's actually to decide whether it related to what you search or not. You need to read the abstract first. Yeah, could be. I mean, based on the abstract, I'll talk about in a minute. Based on the abstract, you are getting the background, you're getting the overview, especially in case if the abstract are structured, that gives you even a better indication because you have then background, you have then uh, methodology, you have then actually the reason, and then you have actually the conclusions. I agree with that in a way. Um, yeah, 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 okay. I agree, Natricia, with you as well. Uh, but what I wanted to say is actually kind of trying to link those actually to different areas. As I said, based on future research, you might actually start proposing something new. Um, just few slides and then I'm done. I'm sorry for being so uh, late and talking too much. So what I want to say is kind of, whenever you read them, just think in maybe from that perspective as well. So the general about the article, what is it about? Title and abstract, that's actually what Islam has just said. What is the context? Probably abstract and introduction and could be theoretically, even if you go into the methodology and read about the sampling or something like that. Um, what are the research or knowledge gaps? It is address, addressing actually this journal or now this journal, this paper. Definitely introduction, probably literature review because at the end of the literature review, you might have research questions, uh, research gaps and research questions. So that would be actually then the part where you go to. And once again, I'm trying actually to link that even with your, with your PhD or DBA thesis, okay? Just in order to see where you can actually extract maybe the most valuable information uh, and, and then actually incorporate it into that. Objectives of the article. What specifically is it proposing to do? That would definitely be regarding research questions, conceptual framework and the hypothesis. That's there. I mean, yeah, you can find it probably in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, abstract as well or something like that. But if you want to know a little bit more, a bit bro a deeper, then you would read something like that. And the methodology one is extremely important one. I mean, don't forget, don't skip methodology, okay? When you're reading something, sometimes for some of the students, it gets boring at one point, don't do that. Because the methodology is one of the most important parts actually of your thesis. Methodology has to be really developed in a most, I mean, best possible way, I would say, because if you screw up with the methodology, then things will not be ending well. Don't forget that. So read actually and understand whether is it qualitative or quantitative, uh, how they have done it, is it case studies, how they written actually their interview protocols, how they were written, how they were asking the questions, were they focus groups, were they individual, how was actually uh, informed, how they were, Things like that, if you can even read here about the uh, ethics, uh, ethical approaches and stuff like that, do that. The same thing is actually with quantitative, you know, the surveys. So many students think, I mean, building up a survey is easy, cheesy, forget it. Read a lot about it and you will understand it. Okay, is it a mixed methodology, even a better way of doing it maybe, it helps you to understand that about the research design sampling. So extremely important. Don't once again screw it up with sampling because maybe you will not be able to use the analytical uh, methods you have kind of picked, selected because your sampling will not be good enough. Something will be missing. So read that. And then definitely we're talking to analytical procedures. Doesn't matter, is it now your proposal or is it actually actual thesis? Even in the proposal, you have to understand that, and you have show you have to show the, the the committee that you are understanding and you are actually kind of aware of different method, different analytical uh, methods which might be used. Doesn't matter; it's now qualitative or quantitative. Everything is there, and if you don't get it, 
then you have, as we said, other types of papers where actually methodology is even explained in more detail, or you just uh, grab a book and then go actually deeper to understand it. And then, okay, what did the find is uh, the study find definitely results, and these results will be actually included into your definitely your discussion. These results will be definitely included. I mean, potentially included in your in your um, 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 literature review, maybe even in the introduction. What is the meaning of the findings, and how do the results relate to what is already known? Definitely discussion, and don't forget to write a discussion is extremely tricky. Most of the students have issues with discussion. And who has actually issues with discussion? Unfortunately, I'll be unpleasant now once again, and I will say the ones who have not read enough, the ones who read actually enough, they find it easy to write a discussion. They find it easy to write a literature review. They find it easy to understand actually how to write the introduction, how to write the conceptualization. So read, read, and once again, read as much as you can. And definitely discussion is an important part, probably the most important part of your uh, PhD anyway, or DBA. So um, yeah, read many discussions in order to understand how that goes. And uh, what we said that just a few minutes ago, I guess, um, referencing yep, back to existing literature, extremely important because you will see the authors, you will see actually the groups, and you will see the journals which are actually writing a lot about topic. So another way to find them much, much, much easier and to read them because they are actually really, let's say, uh, good in that. Contributions, discussions and conclusions, Definitely, and here we can go actually deeper uh, in the conclusions. So implications, you will probably have to write as well, usually because uh, it has to be especially something written for managers or maybe for policy makers or whatever it is. So uh, what we have learned and what can be applied actually in the praxis, as well as, yeah, the two parts of the article limitations, every study has limitations. And I'll tell you, the faster you write your limitations, the better it is for you. Because your limitations are telling me that you understand what hasn't been done because of different issues, factors, or whatever it is. But if you have not mentioned that, then I will think, or I mean, unfortunately, my reviewers of our papers will think that guy has no idea because he has not mentioned that. Think of limitations as well and read them um, because on the other side, those two things, limitations and future research, can be an extremely, extremely good source of your research, of your uh, future projects. Because they are telling us what uh, is missing and could be done better, or additionally, and here, what new can be actually done, what new stuff can be done. Okay, so. Um, yeah, just, I'm not going to that. The structure is a little bit different. It depends what kind of paper uh, you are reading. And I guess that's it. Anyway, too long. I'm so sorry for my extremely um, long talking and too much of talking. Any questions to this part? Uh, this one question is regarding research questions. I very often find articles stating the purpose of the study, but not the mentioning any research questions. Is it due to the approach of the research, maybe inductive, or the question, questions which are written implicitly? See, um, <clears throat> I mean, in a, in, a, in yeah, no, no. I mean, every every research has a research question. I mean, I have have to. Um, but it depends once again on the journals and policy of the journals. See, if you go, if you go to the, let's say, I mean, once again, you will definitely see in many, in many journals that they are asking and requesting kind of uh, research gaps, requesting uh, research questions, 
and things like that, that are actually clearly written. Some of them not. I mean, I have even, um, not many, but some, some of the journalists even don't ask for discussion. I mean, forget it. If there's no discussion, there's nothing there. So I, once again, Nesrin, I cannot tell you which journal that was in a way, but check it whether that was actually a good journal or not a good journal, because you still have journals which are there just in order, um, I don't know, to publish whatever it comes and they are saying we are publishing, you know, um, but it has nothing to do uh, with inductive or whatsoever, uh, because you start usually with a research question. I mean, as we said, research question is informing your framework and framework and research question are actually informing your um, hypothesis. Hypothesis are actually informing actually your, your methodology. So all of those things are kind of linked, uh, but could be that that was not written in that way. That's really a kind of a research question stated clearly. Uh, but the, the purpose and the purpose and the study and, and research question are not always the same, but um, yeah, in a way are linked. Definitely, I agree with that. But the research question informs and tells you really uh, a little bit more than just the purpose. I also have another question is, why would certain thesis and dissertation be embargoed? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Why would certain thesis and dissertations be embargoed? Where's that? Where's that? Well, well. Uh, it's yeah. usually when the um, when you register your thesis or, or dissertation, okay, 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 okay. the university allows you to embargo for a period of time. It's usually if you intend um, uh, it's confidential pieces in there, or you intend publishing over the next two to three years of it. Um, that is that is what that is actually what you can theoretically that is what you can theoretically pick. I mean in most of universities when you submit your thesis then you can actually ask or request uh, for that embargo for two I mean depends one two uh, usually two years more I guess not and that means that your thesis will not be uploaded online. Um, if that's okay or not okay that's another question. Um, 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 see, uh, my view on that is that if that is kind of a confidential information because of, I don't know, government, because of a uh, company or something like that, I do agree with that. And uh, from that perspective, it could be actually um, kind of closed, let's say forever. But that is just because you want to publish your stuff within the next two years. I do not agree with that. Because usually uh, somebody is not able to, if that's a good research, nobody will be able to do actually the same stuff so fast that could actually kind of be faster than you are. So um, that's my view on that. Um, and I don't want to go into detail right now, but uh, I guess we will be having another webinar. We just planned them yesterday or two days ago, where we will be talking exactly about that. Where we'll be talking actually how students together with their supervisors can plan in advance what to publish, where to publish um, in order to, yeah, first of all, motivate the students to publish and on the other side, actually to make it much easier. And you can clearly um, do that well in advance while you are actually planning your research, even before you start. And while you're writing your literature review, as I said, uh, you can think about a conceptual paper, paper or very different things. So think about that, as I said, everything can be published, whatever, in, I mean, not in a bad journal, in a good journal, whatever is done actually in a proper way. And most of you, most of you, I hope, I guess, I expect will do exactly that. Just, uh, you know, yeah, no more comments on that. So hands on will not be done today because as I understand, I'm anyway probably too late. Uh, my, my screens were done today perfectly fine. I didn't even see the time. So that I, that's why I was free to talk as much as I could. I'm kidding. So hands on, what was meant, but really do that. So kind of how good are your three best ranked articles? Now, because we are not doing that, it's not about your three, but about your 50, 
you have read or maybe 100. And um, I hope that from now on, you will be following the rankings as well. Check that, be aware of that and really try to read actually those articles which are ranked in good databases, which are highly ranked in those bases. And what I show you actually there, you know, being in an area, the third best journal that makes sense of reading it. Beating, I don't know, 10th out of 240, it makes sense to reading it because you will spend exactly the same amount of time to read a good journal or a good paper in a good journal as much as you will actually spend time of reading a paper, which is maybe not of that quality. Maybe I'm saying, okay, maybe, maybe. I don't want to say that the papers in lower length uh, ranked journals are not good. I have never said that, okay? So time is running, is over here probably. I'm sorry for that. Any more questions beside the one I asked you to ask it at the end? And we can actually just remain and not bother or not bore the others. Is there any question on that, what I have kind of presented today? Everybody already disappeared, everybody already slept. Yeah. Deathly quiet. Yeah, it's extremely quiet. Mm. Was it was it was it so was it so annoying? No, they found your presentation always enlightening. Not sure about that, but thanks for the roses or flowers or whatever you want to give me right now. I'm happy with that. So any questions, guys? I mean, you you should unmute yourself. I mean, I've spoken now for, I don't know, one hour and something. Oh my God, one hour and a half almost. Sorry for that. So uh, now it's your turn. Nope, all good. Better that everything's good. I hope with, I hope. Always welcome. Always was my most welcome. So if there are no additional questions, as I said, please do that stuff. And don't forget from now on to focus actually on good journals. And you will learn a lot, even when you read and you see, or, or you can go actually and take two different ones, you know, a highly ranked journal, and then actually something what is not of that kind of quality, should I say, hopefully nobody will kill me for that. Um, and you will see the difference. You will definitely see the difference. So go and read stuff, which is actually really good. What's written here, are they good enough for you? It's about you and for you. Okay, so if there are no questions, I will stop talking and I will just reply to the last question which was linked something about uh, Rejected proposal, proposal or something like that, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to stop recording now. Okay, thanks once again.